Welcome to The Mischief, I'm Valen and this is the Thermal Series, where I'll be teaching you about the Phytogenic Insulator, the Multi-Servo Press, and the Sawmill. Alright, I'm going to be showing you a way of actually generating power with this combination of items that I thought was quite unique and actually pretty darn good. Uh, it was a lot better than I had anticipated. We're going to start off with an aqueous accumulator. If you're not familiar with that, I have covered it in a previous video, but essentially if there's water on multiple sides of it, it will automatically generate water inside of it regularly. So we're going to be using that in combination with a phytogenic insulator. The phytogenic insulator is the heart of this build, and it's actually one of the most valuable tools you can have in thermal expansion. You can see that there's quite a bit of stuff going on in here. It needs some kind of liquid. It needs some kind of solid. It also can have some kind of fertilizer boosting it. It will basically grow things for you uh, to sum it up, but it does need liquid power and uh, some kind of item that it needs to grow. It doesn't actually need anything to boost it. There are options for getting better outputs, but you don't have to have that in there. This is where a lot of people don't think a phytogenic insulator is very valuable because they overlook this. So let's look at the recipes. If you click here, you can see just putting in some barley seeds, for example, you'll get two barley and you'll get regular seeds plus an additional chance of getting some more seeds so you could feasibly get, you know, more of these over time. Same thing with nether wart and so on. There's 25 pages of different seeds and things. But look, you can also do this with saplings. You can make wood very simply. And you know what you can do with wood? Well, many things, but in this idea, we're going to be using it as a fuel source. Now, yes, of course, you can also use it with the different uh, spores that this mod already offers and get the drops from those as well so you don't have to plant them in the world. This does make things a lot simpler for this. So any number of different crops can be grown in this thing, and it is really fantastic. In this case, I'm going to be using a spruce sapling. You can use whatever sapling you like, but I'm using this just because I like spruce. Now we do need some kind of liquid coming into it, and that's where the aquatic accumulator comes in that's below it. So by opening this back up, we can auto input from below, and it should automatically start filling with water. There we go, topped up. Now, as I said before, you can put in a fertilizer in here, whether it be a bone meal or a phytogrow, but you don't need to. Those are just extras to get you a boosted result. If you do decide to use a different type of sapling, be aware of the different outputs you may end up generating. For example, if you use an oak sapling, you may get apples, which could clog up the works. So you're going to want to be careful about that. Next, we're going to put the output, which is also going to be an input. And that is going to be a hopper on top of it, pointing down into it. It's a little confusing, but bear with me. I will explain as we go. Next, we need to put down the sawmill next to the hopper. And this will take some of the items into it from the hopper that don't go back into the phytogenic insulator. I'll explain more as we go, but it's best if I place all of these down so that we can continue on with just explaining how it works. We're going to put down the multi-servo press next here, forming kind of a U-shaped loop. So this tree will be processed into multiple planks and another sapling. Then. It will output to the top, which goes into a hopper, which is automatically feeding back into the phytogenic insulator. I'm going to turn this so that it inputs and outputs to the top. It will only import things that it can actually fit into this slot, so it won't take any of the other products besides the spruce sapling in this case. So that will leave the planks in the item hopper, which we can have the sawmill take from the side and process into planks. Now, if you look at a sawmill, this thing is pretty darn handy. It gets you better results than you normally would get by using an ax or crafting in a crafting grid. You'll get more planks and a possible output of sawdust on the side. And this is for any generic item. Of course, you can also use it for melons as well. Now the output from this is going to be planks and it's going to be sawdust eventually. It may be not on every activation, but you should get some sawdust at some point in there, which it will need to output down below to the multi-servo press. This thing here will accept multiple different types of dyes. 
Dies are used to change what the multi-servo press does. If you look at the recipes, it's got 73 pages. There's a ton of stuff in here. But if you look, you've got like a numismatic die, so you can turn ingots into coins. You've got packing dies, so you can take a, four by, a two by two recipe and turn it into a uh, product as if it's an auto crafter. You've got unpacking stuff where it will actually take a block and remove it from a two by two grid and put it into its base ingredients. Then you've got stuff like the packing die that I have here, which will then take a 3x3 and combine it into a block shape. And of course, there's also the gear working die, which saves you a nugget uh, of, of crafting for making gears if you really need to. Now, without any kind of die in here, it will accept ingots and turn them into plates. This is actually kind of important because some of the upgrades and parts in this mod will require these, and this is how you end up doing it. You're pretty much set at that point because it will take the sawdust and it will compact it into a block, which then sterling dynamos can process. So we're going to put down a couple sterling dynamos, have them facing away to the outside, and we're going to have the output from the sawmill also go to the right. Now, individual pieces of sawdust will not be burned in a sterling dynamo, but if they're packaged in a multi-servo press, then they will. So let's take some inputs, and some outputs here so that once they're packaged it can go in here so this sterling dynamo which sterling dynamos are incredibly cheap to make will process only the block form of sawdust this will only process planks from the wood trees being chopped up in the sawmill this actually gets you a pretty decent amount of power but you will need of course some way of storing that power for future use I recommend about five redstone flux cells. Of course, if you have some kind of power mod installed, you can use whatever you like. You'll want to have all of these connected and be sure to have them outputting to the machines and inputting from the Sterling Dynamos. And don't forget to auto input and auto output any of your redstone flux cells that you may need so that your power can flow as it should. Then once in place, just be sure to put in a bit of charcoal. You could always double it up. One in each Sterling Dynamo should double your power output. You'll want to upgrade your sterling dynamos at your first opportunity as those are definitely going to be making more power and they can get backed up with the amount of product that you're going to be getting from this. The phytogenic insulator on the other hand is probably the next item that you're going to want to upgrade. It does use 20 RF per tick but it does take some time for it to actually make the uh, outputs. And Once it's done it then processes everything into the other ones and they should be able to keep up pretty well. And there we go, you know you've got power when you see the display on the front and it is processing the spruce sapling. Now it does take a bit of time and power. You'll probably want to wait for some to accumulate before you end up turning on your machine just so that it doesn't end up staggering at the very bottom here and constantly turn on and off. But as you can see, it's very slow. I'm gonna recommend an augmentation here of integral components just to get things going a bit faster. And this is not a requirement, it's just going to speed things up here, though it will be at an increased cost. And once this finishes, you should see a whole bunch of activity on the other machines, if I remember to turn the inputs and outputs on appropriately. But all of the outputs from this, the spruce log and the spruce sapling, normally would go into these outputs, but I, I, I seem to have forgot the auto output. There we go. And the sawmill starts cutting the wood. The multi-servo press just sits here with any sawdust built up from the sawmill itself. And of course the spruce sapling went up and back down into here and it's going to just reprocess. Over time you may gain more spruce saplings. This is the only manual part of it. You might have to occasionally remove your spruce saplings or whatever sapling you are using so that you don't back this up. But it will be some time before that happens. Now the sawmill, as you saw, chopped up all those into planks. Planks got fed directly into the sterling dynamo, and wow, we've got over a half a stack that is currently being processed. And it's working at its highest speed, so you might want to just double that as it is so that it is sure to process things a little bit quicker. And then you notice the multi-servo press. It's sitting down here with no energy use. It will sometimes use a little bit of energy, but not very often. It only needs it when it just processes some of these sawdusts into a block. And as there's not enough to make a block, it does need nine of them. You will need to wait for this to actually happen. This is why I recommended putting in a couple uh, blocks of coal because for it to get started is a little bit much, but then once it's going, oh, it, it goes. You can see the sawdust will start building up with the next batch and pow, it just made it and instantly gets powered. And this is the one that you probably don't really need to uh, upgrade for a while because 
it will still get you the same amount of power coming out of it, and the frequency that you get the sawdust isn't often enough for you to really worry about uh, this thing getting backed up very often. It's more or less the Sterling Dynamo itself, which as you can see, it's already getting full again. And to give you an idea of the spruce planks, any kind of planks will give you an energy of about 3,000, which you think, all right, that's not much, but then you think of the number of planks that you're getting. In a sawmill, you're getting six each. That's 18,000 RF per spruce log, which you're making six of them on each one. And that's only costing you 1,000 RF to cut them up. Phytogenic insulator does take 60,000 RF, but by the time you're done, you're netting yourself quite a nice amount of power coming back to you. Now, there are other ways that you could possibly set this up, but I found this one really entertaining, pretty useful, because a phytogenic insulator in itself is just handy to have around the base, and it's just really neat uh, to be able to use all of these. Plus, you'll need the multi-servo press for other things, and very few people will ever use a sawmill. This is actually one of the best reasons I've found to use it so far. If not just for the planks, then you could use it for power. And there you have it, the multi-servo press, the phytogenic insulator, and the sawmill, all in this handy-dandy little setup just for you. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, stop by on Twitch, click the notification bell, and as always, help us spread the mischief. I'll see you guys next time.